We are live. Woohoo. I am so happy to be here. Episode six. Episode six, right? Or is it episode five? I think it's episode five. I'm like getting ahead of myself. Hey, Freda. Welcome to episode five of Organize and Socialize. My name is Malka. If you don't know me, but you do. <laughs> Um, I am today we are going to be discussing fridge organization freezer organization and meal and menu planning okay so if you didn't have a chance to send me in your questions yet then please um, type it in and I'll go through them at the end and I'm happy to answer any questions that I get um, okay we are gonna get started. So with any organization, with any organizing project that we have, we always empty the space out, right? So today we're gonna start with our fridge. So let's say you're starting from scratch and you want to organize your fridge. You are gonna pull everything out of your fridge. We're gonna start fresh, pull everything out, and then we're gonna categorize it sort everything, put them in their own categories. So to recap, um, we are pulling everything out of the fridge. We are spreading it out over a counter, sorting them into categories, and then we're going to go through each category. So let's think of some categories that we might have. Um, condiments, right? Maybe different kind of sauces and stuff like that spreads um, what else would we have um, dairy products whatever categories we might have we're gonna go through all of those things and we're gonna check expiration dates throw out any food items that are expired um, we are going to once those are gone the expired items we might find things you know like for sure, sauces and condiments were like, we bought this on a whim, we thought we might use this, we don't really. Um, then totally, you know, you're going to you're gonna want to get rid of that. You might want to give it to somebody that um, might use it. If it's unopened, you might want to give it to a housekeeper. But basically, just get it out of there. You don't, want, you don't use it anymore, then we're not going to keep it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean your fridge down. Get a spray bottle, get some paper towel, wipe it down. It's always great to start nice and fresh and clean. So after we um, cleaned out our fridge, we have all our food items in categories. We know what we're keeping. We are gonna start putting things back. Okay, so let's start with the door. What kind of items might go on the door of a fridge? Um, we might have, I, this is, I'm gonna ex tell you how I do it in my home because that's the experience I have and that's how it's gonna work, that's how I feel it works best in my experience. But if anyone has any other experience, please feel free to share. I'm always open to hearing what works for other people. Um, okay, so in a fridge, you want things that you use most often at like hand or eye level, things that are easy to grab when you need it. So I'm thinking condiments, maybe like ketchup, mustard, mayo, things like that, maybe barbecue sauces. Keep on your arm reach on the door. Um, those are things that you might use more often. Um, I like to put, you know that little like hutch up top on the fridge? I like to put hard boiled eggs there to keep them separate from regular eggs. And um, I keep that up there and my ripe avocados so that um, it's just what works for me. I like it there. Keeps it away from the kids can't get to it. Um, and then underneath that hutch, I like to keep bottles of milk. And again, I'm going to, um, let's say, you know, any, any milk bottles. Um, I like to keep that higher up as well. Um, lots of ums tonight. I'm going to try to get rid of those. Okay. So, Underneath that shelf is where I would start to put condiments. Now, some people have a lot. I have about two shelves of condiments, condiments slash spreads. So I kind of, you know, 
um, mix them up. But the condiments, I would put more at like hand level or, you know, easier to grab. And below that, maybe spreads. At least for me, I'm not using spreads like those as often. So for you, if you would use them more often, then keep them, you know, where it would be, um, where it would be more convenient for you. So then there's in my fridge, I have look on the bottom shelf. I have a, I have a lower shelf than that. And that I kind of keep, um, hey Sammy, I'm so happy you're here. Um, I like to keep just ran they're going to be random items that just maybe there isn't room for somewhere else and it's just an extra and I, you know, I don't have, I, I don't mind keeping it down below because I'm not using it very often. So that's our door. The door of our fridge is now organized. Um, I like to, on these shelves, I like to label them. Just because it makes my it makes my life so much easier. It makes um, you know unpacking groceries, knowing where to put everything. When I have other people in my home and they want to look for something, they're not sure where it is. I could just be like, "Hey, go look on the condiments shelf, and you'll find it right there." So now let's look, and now we're gonna put things back in the rest of the fridge. Okay, so let's think about what kind of items we might have. Um, maybe lettuce or kale or spinach, you know, the greens, that kind of stuff. Um, wherever you decide to put it, really, it doesn't matter where, as long as you keep like things together. And you'll see, if you don't do this yet and you start to do it, you may turn that into, you may like, your fridge is going to start to resemble a certain layout. And it's going to, you're going to start doing the same thing every week when you unpack your groceries and it'll stay. And you're going to see because let's say in my fridge for me, I always put my greens up on the top shelf in the back. So my fridge is a little bit like kind of narrow and deep, which is not so convenient, but you know, I have to just work with it. So I put um, my greens in the back and then I have room in the front for, you know, something else, maybe some prepared food or things like that. And that's fine for me. But um, <clears throat> as long as your food items, again, are grouped together, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter where it's placed. Um, let's think of, let's say you have like prepared food or you have fruits and vegetables that don't fit in the bin. For example, maybe a container of strawberries or blueberries, you know, like any kind of fruits or vegetables that come in, uh, maybe cherry tomatoes, they come in like those pint containers um, keep those obviously you're gonna keep those in their container unless you like to I shouldn't say obviously unless you like to wash everything and have it prepped which is amazing if you do that um, we'll get into that soon but those actually stack really nicely and you might want to have a shelf you might want to keep that on the same shelf as your lettuce because it's all you know um, produce items right okay so the two, for me, I have like the bottom part of my fridge, you know, I have two drawers, I have one for fruits and one for vegetables, and that might seem, it might seem a little silly to do this, but I label them, because again, when I have guests, when I have people visiting, they just, people are able, they open it up, and it's so nice when you, you know, when you go to a, when you go to someone's house, and the host says, oh, help yourself, you know, take what you want, take what you need. And when they actually can and they open the fridge and they're not just like rummaging through your stuff and maybe it gets awkward, like they see exactly where things are right away and it just makes it easier. So believe me, I get some laughs when some people come into my house and they're like, oh my goodness, your fridge is all labeled. And I'm like, ah, I love it. It just makes me so happy. So on top of the vegetable bin, I have another drawer and that's where I like to keep dairy items. Um, I keep, I have a little bin in there. I'm going to give you a little tour after, but I have a little bin in there with um, string cheese because I like to take things out of the packaging. So this way it's easier for the kids to just grab one when they want one. And I don't have like string cheese flying all over my fridge. It just makes it, it's contained and it's nice. 
Um, one other thing, I also, in my house, we use a lot of eggs. So I, whenever we go to Costco, we buy one of those big, like five dozen, um, five dozen tray, five dozen eggs, right? So it happens to be that I have a spot where it fits like really perfectly. And really what it comes down to is like adjusting your shelves. Don't be afraid of adjusting the shelves in your fridge and your freezer in any part of your home. Adjust them, make it work for you. Just because it was a certain way when you moved in, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way. So obviously there are gonna be some homes where certain things aren't adjustable, but if they are totally just make it work for you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Let me know. Let me know how you're enjoying this. Send me some love. Um, what I am going to do is, first I'm going to sip some wine. Anybody drinking with me tonight? I am going to, actually before I show you, it's okay, you could go. Before I show you my fridge, what I want to do is, um, Okay, so when it comes to fridge maintenance, it's really important to upkeep it, right? When you're living, you know, things get messed around, which is okay. You know, things, it's what happens when you're living with a spouse and children and other people living in your space. But a good time to kind of go through your fridge and do like a general sweep of, you know, see what's going on is when you do your produce shopping. Okay, now I generally do my produce shopping on Thursday. And, um, what's an Amstel, Sammy? I don't know what that is. Um, my ignorance. So, basically, when I go, I go, I do produce shopping on Thursday, and when I, whenever I, like, unpack my groceries, I go through my fridge, I take everything out, I pull it out, I see what kind of like, you know, leftover food is left there, what needs to be thrown out, <clears throat> and that's kind of when I do it. Now, sometimes, I had a busy weekend, I had guests this weekend, and my fridge is starting to like, you know, simmer down, but it can use a little maintenance. So, I'm going to do it with you, okay, you're going to see how what I would do to straighten up my fridge. I was gonna do it earlier, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take you on this journey with me, okay? So just come along with me. I'm just gonna turn a light on, because at night I love when the lights are off. Um, okay, let's switch you guys around. Ta-da, here is my fridge. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what I have here and how I'm going to make a couple of changes, okay? So up here, remember I told you I keep eggs and avocados. Um, this is my milk shelf over here. Now, my husband has gotten into a habit of enjoying dry fruit when he comes home from work, which is wonderful, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull them out because I don't like the spot for them. It's the milk shelf, not the dry fruit shelf. Um, I actually have another bottle of milk that's defrosting in the sink. Um, it could actually use a little wipe down, which I'm not going to do this second just because um, I want to kind of stay on, you know, I don't really have a way of holding it anyway, holding the phone. So right now I pulled out the dried fruit. We're going to find another spot here. Let's see what we have. This is our condiment shelf. Um, it looks like there's two sodas here, which ironically enough, we never even drink, but we'll put that down there. Remember I told you I put things lower down that are not often used. Um, I have the condiments here. Let's straighten that up. Oh, I see a mayo in my, on the top shelf of my fridge and that will fit perfectly in here. So right now in the condiments, I have only items that I am going to keep, and down here I have spreads. Okay, now I keep this grape juice bottle here just because it fits well, but the truth is, oh, I was gonna say maybe I could adjust the shelf to make more space on the bottom, but that's not gonna work because, do you see here? There's like a whole empty space and it's gonna be too high up if I move it all there. So, um, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It's not bothering me, it's fine. Actually, what I'm gonna do is, I'm thinking, hey, let's put dried fruit on the bottom. 
My husband is the only one that eats them. Um, I hope just trying to hold it all very straight. And sorry, I'm really not good at holding a holding a phone at the same time as as you know doing organizing. This is definitely a first for me. Um, okay, that's having a hard time staying, but everything has a place now. I actually really like that down here. And my husband is watching, so he's gonna know where to find his dried fruit when he gets home. Um, okay, now that I'm sitting down here, we have, I'm gonna stick this inside. We have our fruit bin, our veggie bin. From the outside, you can't really tell the truth is from inside either, but I basically, even when I put the veggie, the, my veggies away, my fruit and veggies, like there's an order. I always line up my zucchini. Yes, I use a lot of zucchini. Um, I put like tomatoes there, peppers on top. Um, usually I buy English cucumbers, so those are in the front. So it's pretty easy for me to find what I'm looking for when I need it. Um, okay, let's show you a little clearer. So you see my dairy drawer? I have only dairy items in here. My string cheeses in this, just a little bin keeps things, you know, contained and in place. And I actually love it because it's totally on the level of the kids. I mean, this is how the fridge came, so it works. But um, it's so easy. My kids love string cheese. They, they, you know, pull it out when they need it. And, um, you know, when I tell my kids, like, oh, can you grab me some cream cheese? I'm going to make you a sandwich or something like that. Like, they see where it is. It's so easy. It's always in the same spot. So I really love that. Okay, on this shelf... Um, like I mentioned before, it's kind of like a more narrow shelf. So I always keep my eggs here. Um, I keep, I usually keep like bigger things like cauliflower or sometimes I have more vegetables like that. Right now I only have one. Over here I have sandwiches made for the kids tomorrow. Um, and I would like to straighten up up here. Up here I have some greens. So I'm going to kind of shift up here for a second. Bear with me. I'm going to try to hold it in my left hand. And maybe that will be easier. Okay. I have to remember to keep my left hand straight, right? So I'm just standing up the bags because these kind of stand on their own. So I just stood up the bags of I have kale and spinach and some broccoli there. I'm going to keep that juice right over here and Snapple right over here. Um, I do have some, so that shelf looks great. Um, I'm going to stick some blueberries up here because again, it's all like, you know, extra produce type stuff. Um, I have these little containers that I prepared of fruit for my kids for their lunches tomorrow. So I'm kind of going to like stick those under there and um, just because there's like a little spot for them there. Um, I have some fennel up here, so I'm going to stack those together. Um, and I have a few cherry tomatoes left that I'll put up there. I am noticing that I have these two dips that are not good anymore, so I am actually going to throw those out. La 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 la, throw them in the garbage. And here is our finished product. Just a quick maintenance. It looks beautiful now. I see what I have. It's all really easy to find. Okay, we I'm going to flip you guys around. Flip me around actually. And I, we are going to continue over here. Let's see what comments I got. Okay, Amstel is a beer. Okay, now that explains why I don't know that, because I don't drink beer. Um, Freda, I was once told the door isn't the best place for milk since it's not as cold as the shelf. Hmm, that is a good, that's a good point. Um, you know, I don't know if it's not as cold as... Is it not as cold as the shelf? I kind of want to look into that and find out. I feel like maybe because it's like the door gets open, so it's like maybe because of that. I guess maybe that's why the door would be less cold. 
I'm going to find out about that, Freda. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Um, Sammy, what are your favorite fridge bins? Okay, so there are really good fridge bins. There's, um, if you go to the container store, InterDesign sells really good ones. They're just clear. I like clear in a fridge because um, it just, you know, the, why do I like clear? It is um, because you have like so many other items in your fridge, it just gives it like a nice cleaner look. And if you are putting bins in your fridge, which is wonderful if you do, um, then I would label those as well so that you kind of keep to it. I don't usually put, the reason why I don't have bins in my fridge is because I also have like many times like cooked items and I feel like the bins would take up too much space and I have different things that I'm cooking different weeks and like, you know, for weekends, for Shabbat, I usually do more cooking and I need more space, you know, and the bins might not be the most efficient way if you do a lot of cooking at home. So you got to do what works for you. Um, okay. Now, let's move on to freezer organizing. I'm going to take a little sip over here. Okay. So, the freezer, the freezer is like a really easy place to get cluttered quickly. Um, usually, freezers are like a little bit more awkward when things get frozen, things can get like, you know, depending on the bag, let's say you think of like a bag of frozen fruit or frozen vegetables. They're kind of like awkward, right? And they can take up unused, they can really like use up space in a very awkward way, which makes it hard to keep things organized. Therefore, I do recommend, that is a place where I recommend bins. Um... Yeah, definitely, definitely recommend bins. So, the key to keeping a freezer organized is by keeping like items together. It's so easy for things to get lost in a freezer. How many times? Like, it could happen so, so often. So, keep group, keep like items together. Let's say you're organizing your freezer and you decide, hey, I'm doing an organize, I'm on organize and socialize with Malka now, so I'm going to get ahead and start to organize my freezer. And I... I totally encourage you to do that right now. Pull everything out of your freezer, every single item, and you're gonna group the like items together, okay? Now, once that is done, you are going to, um, you are going to wanna put them back in. So if you haven't gone shopping yet and you're like, wait, I don't have my bins. So just know your space, take measurements, and know the space that you that you need to fill a container in, that you need to fill a bin, fit a bin in that space. But you can still put things back in your freezer. So just make sure you have like all your breads together. Maybe if you have frozen pizza or ice cream or frozen fruit or frozen meals, just keep them all together. Now, one key is to get rid of bulky packaging. Um, boxes, let's say frozen pizza comes in a box. Um, you know, individual, uh, like let's say ices or popsicles come in a box. Get rid of the box. It's going to, you're going to gain so much space, you're not even going to realize it. So any kind of um, food items that come in those kind of packaging that I just described, then definitely um, get yourself, um, get yourself bins to, so that you can unbox those items. And another like perk of using a bin is that many frozen items don't stand up well. So it'll just like contain it. A bin is going to hold it in place and you're going to be good. Now, um, maybe you do want to do it right now. You might have like some extra bins lying around. I actually always tell my clients, especially if we're organizing on a budget. Sorry for the... Um, especially if you're organizing on a budget, like look around your house. You might realize that you have a bin that's somewhere that maybe you don't really need it there. Maybe you could, you know, organize that space differently that you don't need that bin and you can use it for something that you really need it for, like freezer organizing. Um, things like soft items like soup. Let's say you're making soup or I don't know what else you might make that is a soft item. 
and you want to freeze it. So I recommend to put them in, freeze them in Ziploc bags. So if you freeze it laying down flat, then what's going to happen is, is that when it's frozen, it's basically like a sheet, right? So what you want to do is, once it's frozen, you could stand it up in a bin. And it's just really easy to find and take out when you need it. And it's just a really, it's a hack that I really like. And also, it's like no mess because when you're defrosting your soup and you pour your soup into a pot, then you just throw up the bag. Okay, right now, we are going to move on to meal and menu planning, okay? Now, there's two types of meal planning. There is making a list of the, the food items that you're going to make during the week. So let's say dinners, right, for example. Maybe you want to do that for lunch as well, if that helps you. Another type is actually preparing some of the food, so we're going to get into both of those. Now, when it comes to planning, any kind of planning or organizing, and specifically in this area, meal and menu planning, the goal is to work smarter, not harder, okay? So the reason why we're preparing things in advance, whether it is knowing what we're going to make that week or preparing some of the food items themselves, is because we want to use our time wisely during the week and so many things can come up right so for example let's say you know it's Tuesday and you're like hey it's like 2 30 hmm what should I make for dinner tonight um hmm let me make hmm what do people make on Tuesdays right tacos maybe you could have taken out the meat in the morning, right? Maybe you had meat in the freezer and you could have taken it out in the morning and now it's like 2.30 and you're like, if I want tacos, I gotta go to the store to get meat. That's an extra stop. If you can avoid that, then let's cut that out. Let's save you time so that maybe you're not in a rush to get your kids after, right? So there's so many different perks. Like what else would be a reason to plan your menus? Um, maybe I don't want to go to the supermarket every day or every other day just to buy dinner, dinner items, right? So um, what I like to do is I like to go, I like to make my menu on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'm already thinking of the following week and I'm thinking, okay, um, I'm going to, what do I want to make for dinner next week? And then I make my shopping list based off of that. And the reason why I make my do this on Wednesday is because shopping day is Thursday. So I want to come to the store and know what I'm going to be buying. Now, I know there are some people that are like, that is way too rigid for me. I like to walk around the store, maybe see what items are on sale, maybe see if there are any, anything that sparks my creativity. And that's totally fine. That's great. If you don't like to do it like that, then just switch around. Do it the opposite way. If you like to just go shopping and see what you want to buy on the spur of the moment, then maybe bring a little paper with you. Or when you come home, you could just jot down what your dinners are going to be when you know what you have. So it really doesn't matter which way you do it. My brain works in the way that I want to know what I'm going to be making first, and then I buy those items in the store. And at this point in my life, I'm basically making the same things every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday is the same thing. I don't really switch it up. I'm not looking for interesting. I'm looking for not a fight with my kids. So I just, you know, I make what works. So again, everyone's lifestyle is different and everybody does things differently. Every, so just do what works for you. If what you're doing now works, don't change it unless for some reason it's not working. Maybe you're thinking like, hey, that's a cool idea. Maybe I should be making a menu on Wednesday um, and just thinking about it in advance. And if you feel like that would enhance your life in any way, then I'm so happy for you to do that. Jump on the bandwagon. So when it comes to dinners, right, like maybe you don't want to make the same thing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, and you don't want to be boring like moi, then what I would recommend is to 
either make a list of like like two weeks worth of dinners and you can alternate or you could I would if you have kids ask your kids what they want to eat um get a list from them have them like have a little like dinner menu planning session and have them or if they can't write like jot down some of their ideas of what they would want because for me it's like so not worth a fight so I'm happy to make you know things that they want to eat as long as it's like you know falls under like you know semi healthy no judgment right guys um so it's important to keep your pantry stocked with essentials that you use so if you're running out of an item let's say you make um honestly i don't make tacos ever because like no one in my house eats them but do you put beans in your tacos is that like an item let's say you put beans in your tacos and you are running out of beans you're going to want to write that down on your shopping list so next time you go shopping you are going to have those you're going to buy those beans so the next time you want to make tacos you're going to have you're going to have them when you make them right you don't want to run out of the things that you use often or not often so it's important to have like a running shopping list i have mine on the side of my fridge um, i have just like a little magnet holding it in place and i just put up another little paper when i finish that one when I use up all the space on it um, but again do what works for you I know some people are like there's some apps out there that people really like for list taking um, for different lists I actually use keep app not for shopping lists but for other, any other kind of list that I need to make that I want to be able to refer back to in the future um, this doesn't have to do with like a daily planner or anything like that. That's completely separate. This is just a place where I like to write down lists. Um, but people use that for shopping as well. I personally don't. I like to go shopping with like a physical paper in my hand and just see what it is. It's just how I work and how I've been doing it for forever and I like that. So, um, but Again, do what works for you. And if anyone has any um, apps that they recommend that maybe you could share with other people, feel free to like type it in so we can all, you know, get in on that. Just a quick tip when you're preparing food. Um, actually, I want to go into this. I, I mentioned before that there are two types of meal planning. One is like just writing down your ideas of what you want to make for dinner that week. But also making, starting to prepare some of the food. Now that can be like really overwhelming for some people. Um, I kind of get into my moods with it. It always like, my week is always like that much better when I do prepare food. And that's with eating healthier and also um, just having things already prepared, right? It just makes it, 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 it makes dinners easier, it makes lunches easier. Truth be told, it makes it easier for my lunches more than dinners because it's usually lunch that I need to, you know, I don't want, it's so much harder to like prepare a lunch for myself than like a dinner for the family, right? So some things, if I am going to do food prep, um, I usually do that on a Sunday and what I would make are hard boiled eggs, I would cook up some quinoa, um, that's always like a good thing to have ready prepared. Um, what else do I make? I might, um, roast some sweet potato. My baby likes that. So it's good to have like on hand for, you know, when I can't find something to feed him. Um, any kind of like roasted vegetables, they stay in the fridge for like three or four days. So I would do anything like that. And it's just good to have those kind of things. You might want to chop up some vegetables as well. You know, you could chop up cucumbers or tomatoes and keep them in separate containers. And that way they're just, they're going to last. And you just have to like dish some out every day for lunch. And there you go. You have like a healthy lunch. Um, and sometimes I'll just open a couple of cans of tuna also. And without adding mayo to it. And then it's just, I just pull out the thing, I add some mayo, and it's just like really quick to mash up. And um, it's just one step that you're taking away. And that's the whole idea of meal prep, is taking out the work when you actually like, when you don't have time to do the work, right? So um, when you are preparing food, I love to keep, I have these like, you know the shopping bags when you come home from the supermarket with? So I just lay it down on the counter, 
and I put all the peels in there and all the garbage, all the things that you're, you know, when you're preparing food and all the scraps of food. And when I'm done, I just wrap up that bag and I throw it out and my counter is clear after that. So it's pretty, it's really nice to, um, you know, make things nice and quick and easy. So that's another quick tip. And um, what else did I want to show you? Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you. I'm gonna flip this around a second. Um, a couple of things I wanna show you. Firstly, this is a cookbook of recipes that I have collected um, literally since I got married, which was, fun fact, 10 and a half years ago. Okay, so I have, this is just literally my collection of recipes. And every once in a while, I actually go through them. And if there's something that I haven't used, um, I throw it out. Like if I realize there's this recipe that I'm just like, for some reason it's there at the time, maybe I liked it and I don't use it. I just, I don't, I don't keep it. I don't. So I throw it out because I want to make space for things that I do want. So um, that's that. It's just like you can get this kind of anywhere. I think on Amazon you can get it. Um, I've seen them in Marshalls, things like that. Um, it's actually like, I don't think I even have room for any more, but I've gotten like refill sheets and like these little like index cards, like recipe cards. Actually a while back what I did was I made like ideas for dairy dinners and like ideas for side dishes or, you know, kids dinners and things like that. And um, honestly, I don't even look at it anymore, but... Um, I kind of go from memory what I know my kids like. Now, this is a menu that um, my favorite graphic designer made for me, Shayna Grush. I'll send you her info if you would like it or need it. So, basically, it's like pretty, pretty easy, right? You have your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You put your dinner item that you're going to make that for dinner. And you have your grocery list. Okay, isn't that great, guys? I love it. I really love this. So um, I actually, I did a Mama Made Market recently. I, had, I was a, a vendor there, and I gave this out at the, um, at the, at the market. And I, um, when I gave it out, I actually laminated it, and I put magnets on it, and people loved it. Like I told them, put it on your fridge. You could reuse it, right? So what I'm going to do for you guys since I love you all so much and I'm so happy you're here um, for the next 24 hours, okay? So if you're not watching this live and you're watching this later on, then I am going to send you that menu that I just showed. Sarah, thanks for joining. I'm going to show you the menu again, okay? Because I want you to see it. Um, this menu here, if you want it, um, send me your email address. And I am happy to send it to you. And um, I would, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that for you. So 24 hours you have. And then if you have a laminating machine at home, laminate it. Because then you could reuse it. You just take a dry erase marker and you jot down your dinners like that. And I'd love feedback on that. Let me know how you like it, how you enjoy it, how it's working for you. And... Um, I like to end off with a habit creating habit. What's my term that I use? Habit forming activity. I like my wording. Um, I like to use these, uh, give you guys ideas of these habit forming activities because when we are organizing, it's really all about creating habits. And I want you guys to really like have something to take away from this, you know, like you should really like enjoy it and and become more organized and it's totally possible to become more organized even if you are not yet it's all about creating habits so the habit forming activity for this week is that when you are doing your menu planning or your meal prep i want you to 
write down your menu, whether it's in an app or on a planner or on a paper or on the menu that I'm going to send you because you're going to send me your email address. I want you to write down your menu. So whether it's before you go shopping or after you go produce shopping, whenever it is, doesn't matter, write it down. Okay? You got it? Thank you guys for joining me here tonight. It was amazing. Drink up and happy organizing. See you next week.